Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة عيوننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد. We begin today's Friday reminder by praising Allah subhanahu wa taala who is no doubt our creator, our sustainer, our nourisher, our protector and our cure. We ask him, the Almighty, the Lord of all worlds, the exalted, to send his choicest of blessings and salutations upon the final messenger, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. My dear brothers and sisters, before I delve into the content that is in place for today's reminder, I'd like to start off by advising myself and then all of you all tuning in to the stream to adopt a life of taqwa. What is taqwa? Taqwa is to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is of utmost importance that we bring in this taqwa that we are conscious of him during every single second of our lives if we wish to attain victory and success in this world as well as the hereafter. And this is in accordance to what he subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Naba. He says, Inna lil muttaqina mafaza. Indeed, for the people of taqwa is mafaza. Mafaza as in victory and success. Victory and success in this world as well as the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the people of taqwa and may he make us from the victorious and successful ones. Ameen. To proceed, you and I as believers, we are striving really hard. We work really, really hard to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because for us, the pleasure of Allah is of paramount importance. Our deeds, our actions, our statements, through all these things, we want to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We fast the month of Ramadan, we stay away from food, we stay away from mufattirat, things that nullify our fast for the sake of Allah to please him subhanahu wa ta'ala. We go on hajj and umrah to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We stand up in prayer, qiyam, you know, during the night, during the last third of the night, in ibadah, in worship, reading the Quran, making dua, praying unto him subhanahu wa ta'ala to please him azza wa jal. We stay away from all which he has asked us to stay away to please him subhanahu wa ta'ala. We give out charity through our hard earned money, be it in the form of sadaqah or zakah, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're doing all of this. We're striving really hard to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are also aware, we know that by pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is going to admit us into his garden, his beautiful and lofty garden, Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all entry into the loftiest of his gardens. I mean, now, in terms of Jannah, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is reported to have said, Jannah, ma la aynun ra'at. It is a place, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, ma la aynun ra'at, wa la udnun sami'at, wa la khatar ala qalbi bashar. No eye has ever seen it, no ear has ever heard about it, nor has it crossed the mind of any human being. You can have the wildest of imaginations, and you can imagine all you want, my dear brother, my dear sister. But you should know that Jannah is far, far beyond that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us entry into this beautiful garden. I mean. So for today's reminder, I hope to touch on eight ways to secure Jannah. Now bear in mind, there are other ways for you to gain access into Jannah as well. But for this video, for this short reminder, I hope to touch on eight ways, inshallah ta'ala. So without further ado, I know you are excited. You want to know the ways. So let's get into them right away. Number one, through taqwa and good conduct. By the way, I'm going to back all of these ways with evidence from the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu So taqwa and good conduct. Hadith is in the book of Imam Al-Tirmidhi, rahimahullah. It is an authentic narration. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu 
So Abu Huraira radiyallahu an, he says, An Abi Huraira radiyallahu anhu qal, Su'ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was asked, What admits most people into Jannah? What admits most people into paradise? Su'ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, what admits most people into paradise? Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responds. He says, Taqwa Allah wa husnul khuluq. Taqwa Allah wa husnul khuluq. The consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be conscious of him, and that is why this reminder we began with it. And we generally do when it comes to a Friday reminders. You would have heard uh, the, the mashayikh, the scholars, the righteous people, they would, they would talk a lot about this concept known as taqwa because it is of utmost importance. And as you can see through this hadith, it gets you into Jannah along with good character. And then in that same narration, the Prophet ﷺ was also asked, what condemns most people to Jahannam, to the blazing fire of hell? And then the Prophet ﷺ went on to respond to that as well by saying, the mouth and the genitals, the mouth and the private parts. Al-fam wal farj, the mouth and the private parts. These are the two things that drag a person into the fire of Jahannam if they are left unchecked. If they are not in control, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to control our mouths and our private parts. So now coming back to the initial part of the hadith, the consciousness of your maker and good character, good conduct, husnul khuluq. If you look into yourself, and I start, I start off by, I start off with myself basically. If you look into yourself, and if you introspect, you'd see that we lack in this regard, in regards to taqwa and in regards to good conduct, in regards to how we deal with other people. Are we following the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu in terms of dealing with others? You know, so it's very important to introspect. Do we enjoy backbiting about others? Do we enjoy gossiping about others? Do we enjoy the sight of someone falling down? So many brothers and sisters, we need to introspect. We need to look into ourselves and ask ourselves in terms of how we deal with, other, with others. So as you can see, these two pieces of advice from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in regards to taqwa, it is to do with your relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The second part of the answer, husnul khuluq, it is now in regards to how you deal with the creation of the creator. So the first part of the answer in terms of how you deal with the creator. The second part of the answer in terms of how you deal with the creation of the creator. Because now by infringing upon the rights of the creation of the creator, you are displeasing the creator. Subhanallah. If you hurt someone, if you backbite about someone, if you gossip about someone, then you have infringed upon the rights. Hukuk al-ibad, otherwise known as hukuk al-ibad. So it is of utmost importance that we work on these two aspects in terms of our relationship with Allah and in terms of our relationship with others around us other human beings in terms of how we deal with them, in terms of how we deal with animals. You know, the creation of our maker, subhanahu wa ta'ala, basically speaking. So we need to ask ourselves, do we enjoy looking at people falling? You know, the falls of others. Are we willing to give them a helping hand? Are we willing to think good about others? Are we willing to make excuses for others? Or... Are we focusing on the faults of others? Are we exposing others? Are we lying? Are we, you know, involved in treachery, deceit, cheating others, robbing them, you know? Subhanallah. It's of utmost importance that we embody the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in this regard. We claim to love the Prophet. 
and we, 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 we say that we are striving to follow the Prophet, then it is of utmost importance that we look at his, his conduct, his character, how he dealt with others, how he, uh, you know, how he conducted himself, how he carried himself وسلم, when dealing with others, and we too should emulate him in this regard. Moving on, path number two, way number two, as-salah. The Prophet is reported to have said, the one who prays the prayers, the five daily prayers, at their prescribed times, there is this agreement, there is this covenant between him and Allah that Allah will admit him into Jannah. So moving on to path number two, way number two to get yourself into Jannah, as-salah, prayer. It's from the pillars of the deen, Bunya al-Islamu ala khams, our deen is built upon five, five pillars. And you know that salah is from the pillars of Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, the one who prays a salawat, the five daily prayers at their appointed times, kana, there will be this ahad between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah will admit him into Jannah. So it is from the pillars of the deen, so you can't do without it. And by offering the prayers at their appointed times for the sake of Allah, now you have this covenant between you and Allah where Allah will admit you into Jannah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it's of utmost importance that you do not compromise on your prayers. Your prayers, this, this beautiful link between you and Allah, this divine link between you and Allah Azza wa Jal, do not compromise on them. Strive to offer them at their appointed times and strive to offer them in the best of ways to secure Jannah. Path number three, a good word, speaking a good word. We have a hadith. We have a narration that has been recorded in the book of Imam al-Bukhari. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu is reported to have said, Aw kama qala alayhi salatu wasalam. Indeed, the slave, and the narration goes along the lines of these words, the slave of Allah, speaks a word, okay, uh, out of the pleasure of Allah, as in seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And through that, what happens is he rises in, in ranks. He rises in his ranks, in terms of his ranks in Jannah. And then in the same hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on to say, the servant may, the slave may speak a single word for which uh, and in another narration, the wording is in such a way, in al-abda la yatakallamu bil kalimati yanzilu biha fin nar ab'ad ma bayna al-mashriq wa al-maghrib. Allahu Akbar. That a slave, a servant may speak a single word for which he plummets. He goes down. Now, the earlier part of the hadith, he goes up in terms of his ranks in Jannah. Here now he's going to plummet down into the hellfire farther than the distance between the east and the west. Through one word, my dear brothers and sisters, one word. Through one word, you either plummet into the depths of hell or through one word, you ascend, you rise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who rise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from becoming of those who plummet. So speak a good word, a positive word, a kind word, a loving word, a caring word. A word to brighten up someone's day. A word that pleases Allah. Let that be the yardstick. A word that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other hand, uttering a single word that displeases Allah azza wa jal. Be it a word of kufr. Be it a word that angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A blasphemous word. Or a word that breaks the heart of another individual. Uh, a lie. You know, falsehood. Uh, a word of oppression in place of a word of justice, a word of oppression, where that results in oppression, that, resu that results in hurt, pain. These are words that will put you down and drag you down like an anchor. May Allah protect us. So this is, this is very important. And this is something that you need to focus on. Moving on. Part number four now. Truthfulness. As-Siddiq. Now look at this hadith. It has been recorded in the book of Imam Al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim, rahimahumallah. 
The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, Alaykum bis sidq. It is obligatory for you to speak the truth. Fa inna sidqa yahdi ila al birr. Listen to these words in very, very interesting and powerful words. For the truth leads to virtue, birr, virtue. Wa inna al birra yahdi ila al jannah. And then virtue leads you to jannah, leads you to the garden. وَمَا يَزَالُ الرَّجُلْ يَسْدُقُ So the man who continues to speak the truth وَيَتَحَرَّ بِالصِّدِقَ or وَيَتَحَرَّ الصِّدِقَ And he strives, he endeavors to tell the truth حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صِدِّيقًا Until eventually this man is recorded as a truthful individual, صِدِّيق Look at Abu Bakr, he is known as Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the truthful. So he is recorded as a truthful individual by Allah. And then the Prophet ﷺ went on to say, وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْكِذْبِ Beware of lies. Beware of speaking a lie, of telling a lie. فَإِنَّ الْكِذْبَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ For lies, for telling a lie, for speaking a lie, it leads to fujur. It leads to sinfulness. It leads to obscenity. Fujur. And al-fujur, wa inna al-fujura yahdi ila al-nar. And then obscenity, fujur, transgression leads to the blazing inferno of Jahannam. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on to say, and the person who keeps lying and he strives to tell a lie. You see today, unfortunately, it's become so common that many of us, even when we are asked, Say over the phone, you are, uh, you are asked, where are you? Or perhaps you're, you are supposed to be there for a meeting or whatever it is. You are asked, are you on your way or where are you? We go on to lie without hesitating. At times we are at home and say, no, no, no I'm, on the, I'm on the road. I'm on my way. Or we are at another location. We say we are somewhere else. You know, and it's become so common that we don't even think twice. We don't even think of it as a lie. So as you can see, one lie after another, this becomes this colossal mountain of lies. And by the way, to cover up for one lie, you need another lie. So you keep on lying, lie after lie. And look at the words of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my dear brothers and sisters. He says that lying leads you to obscenity and obscenity leads you to the fire of Jahannam. And the person who keeps lying and strives to lie, he is recorded as a kathab, a liar. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from the uh, people who are titled as as siddiq I mean. Moving on. Part number five now. Upright dealings. Upright dealings. The Prophet sallallahu is reported to have said that the truthful merchant, the truthful businessman, the truthful entrepreneur, he, the trustworthy and the truthful businessman. He is going to be ma'an nabiyyin wa siddiqeen wa shuhada. Hadith is in the book of Imam At-Tirmidhi. He is going to be with the prophets. Allahu Akbar. He is going to be with the truthful ones. A siddiqeen. And he is going to be with the martyrs. Now you might be wondering, a businessman going to be with the prophets? Going to be with all these great individuals? The prophets of Allah, subhanallah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, think again and sit down and ponder on these words. Do you know how difficult it is to be an upright businessman? Especially in today's landscape, to be a trustworthy businessman, a businessman who does not lie for profit, a businessman who does not deceive, a businessman who does not cheat. It's not easy, subhanAllah. So striving to be that striving to stay away from that which is haram, striving to do business, to deal, transact, sticking firmly to that which is halal, it is not easy, my dear brothers and sisters. So for that, the reward is magnanimous and lofty. You strive to do that, you stay away from halal, haram, stick to that which is halal. So as you can see, a businessman, a merchant who strives, he stays away from haram, sticks to that which is halal and pure, his reward by Allah is great indeed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
make us from those who are truthful and upright in their dealings. You see, today, you hear of many, many issues in the marketplaces. And unfortunately, where Muslims need to be role models in terms of dealing, in terms of transactions, where people should say that, you know what? If it's dealing with a Muslim, we are ready to do so. Eyes closed because they're such truthful people. They're such uh, upright individuals. But unfortunately, it's the other way around. Unfortunately, it's not that, but rather people fear to deal with the Muslims. There is this apprehension when it comes to dealing with a Muslim because uh, you never know how this man might deceive you or cheat you, subhanAllah. That should not be the case. And we as Muslims must strive to, to uh, you know, change the way things are. May Allah help us to do so. Moving on, part number six, anger management. The Prophet Sallallahu is reported to have said, a man, uh, to a man who came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, point me or uh, indicate to me a deed that would admit me into Jannah. The Prophet Sallallahu tells the man, La taghdab. Do not become angry. Jannah. And for you is Jannah and for you is paradise. Ah, Allahu Akbar. Anger management. You see, think about it. When you give in to your anger, it's this rage that destroys and consumes you. It's this fire. It's this uh, raging fire. That's what I was trying to say. It's this raging fire that, that destroys and consumes you. When you give in to your anger, it's this raging fire that just destroys and obliterates, subhanAllah. Think about it. When people are angry, they say all kinds of things. They do all kinds of things. They, they literally lose it, right? So this is where the devil capitalizes. It's a window of opportunity for him to make you do so many things that you're going to definitely regret later on. So it's very, very important that we manage our tempers, our anger. And this would vary from individual to individual. For some, they're very good at it. For some, they, you know, it's, no, it's called uh, you know, having a short fuse where you find it very difficult to control your anger. So depending on where you are on the spectrum of you know, handling and controlling your anger, you must work on controlling it and managing it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to do so. Part number seven, the Prophet sallam, he says that the one who looks after the orphans or the one who looks after an orphan and I are going to be in Jannah hakadha, like this. And he went on to show by uh, basically keeping his fingers, his pointer finger and his middle finger to show the proximity of himself and the one who looks after the orphan in Jannah. So if you want to achieve Jannah, if you want to achieve a, a entry into Jannah and, and proximity with the Prophet Sallallahu in Jannah, look after the orphan, my dear brothers and sisters. Give out in, in, in charity. Look at this other hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu he says, now this is uh, reported by Abu Dardar radiallahu an. Whoever comes with five deeds along with faith will enter Jannah. So this is a, a bonus narration, by the way. Along with the eight paths, I'm going to give you this hadith as well. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he says, one who preserves the five prayers, we've already touched on it, alhamdulillah. Their ablution, along with their ablution, the ablution for the five prayers, their bowings, the ruku' of the five prayers, their prostrations, the sujood of the five prayers, and their timings. The one who uh, protects all of that, he is going to enter Jannah. One who fasts the month of Ramadan, he's going to enter Jannah. One who performs hajj to the house of Allah, if he can find a way to do so, he's going to enter Jannah. One who gives charity with a cheerful soul. You're not giving charity like a Scrooge, where, oh, you know, I have to give zakah, but I don't want to give my zakah. I have to give sadaqah, but I don't want to give sadaqah, no. Rather, the one who gives charity with a cheerful soul, I want to give it and gives it. And the one who fulfills the trust. Now, as you can see, these five things that the, the, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi is mentioning in this hadith, we have discussed it above. So these five things will lead you to Jannah. So charity, giving out charity, giving out sadaqah, giving out your zakah, looking after the orphan, uh, you know, investing in sadaqah jariyah, continuous charity will assure you 
entry into Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us entry into Jannah. Ameen. The last path that I hope to discuss for this video, my dear brothers and sisters, is looking after one's parents. Birrul Walidain. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's report to have said in a hadith, and the narration goes along the lines of these words. How unfortunate is the one, or may his nose be rubbed in the dust, as in this individual is unfortunate indeed. Who? And the Prophet went on to say this thrice, may his nose be rubbed in the dust, may his nose be rubbed in the dust, may his nose be uh, rubbed in the dust, or how unfortunate is he, how unfortunate is he, how unfortunate he is he. So it was asked, who is this individual, Ya Rasulullah? Who is this individual, O Messenger of Allah? The Prophet Sallallahu then says, the one whom during his lifetime, uh, his, uh, either one of his parents, either his mother or his father, or both of them, okay, attain old age. And he is not able to achieve Jannah through that. So let me explain. So you and I, our parents, be it your mother or your father or the, the two of them attaining old age. And now this is a time where you need to be in their service. Looking after them and treating them with excellence upon excellence with Ihsan. So the Prophet says, the one who gets this blessing and then does not enter Jannah. So why is he not entering Jannah? Because he has uh, failed in terms of his service towards his parents. If he's not able to achieve Jannah through his parents, then he is so unfortunate. So my dear brothers and sisters, your mother, your father, if they are alive and with you, either both parents or one parent, don't lose this massive pathway into Jannah, this massive window of opportunity to achieve the pleasure of Allah, thereby gaining entry into Jannah. Don't wait till it's too late, my dear brothers and sisters. Go and listen to the woes of regret of those who have lost their parents. If they could go and sit by their graves now, they would. But it's too late. Their parents have passed on. So if your mother is alive, if your father is alive, if both your mother and your father are alive, then you have this massive opportunity to secure their pleasure by treating them well, by looking after them. At times they're ill, old age, they're finding it difficult. Just, just like how they looked after you when you could not fend for yourself, when you could not even walk. They carried you, they fed you, they nurtured you. And now look at yourself. You are where you are because of them looking after you, my dear brothers and sisters. And you have this huge responsibility upon your shoulders unto them. And the Quran and the Sunnah clearly highlight this. So let us strive to treat them with the best of treatments with excellence upon excellence, thereby securing the garden of our maker subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that, I conclude today's Friday reminder. I look forward to talking to you all in another video soon, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullahu khaira for tuning into this stream. Uh, inshallah, we will talk again uh, as in through the medium of the Friday reminder, perhaps the coming week, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. So we conclude by praying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives our sins, that he accepts our good deeds, that he blesses us, that he opens doors of goodness, prosperity, good health and long life for all of us, that he keeps us steadfast upon his deen, that he keeps our hearts steadfast upon purity and upon his deen. And lastly, may Allah Azza wa Jal admit all of us into his beautiful and uh, lofty garden. Ameen, ameen. Wa akhir da'wai. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullahu khaira. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.